Hello, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about non-binary gender identities, and I want to try to explain them in a way that makes the concept a little bit more accessible to people. I recently realized that my own gender identity is non-binary, or genderqueer, meaning that I don't identify strictly as being male or female. I see this as a form of being transgender, in the sense that I don't identify with my assigned birth sex, which is male. Not all people who identify as non-binary or genderqueer, though, necessarily want to use the label trans or transgender, so that's the first thing to throw out there. When I started questioning my gender identity, and I started researching the different gender identities that were out there besides male and female, I was a little bit overwhelmed at first, and I was very confused. I saw all these different terms, and some of them were really hard for me to wrap my mind around. So I want to make this video to talk about some of these terms and identities, uh, and I want to start by talking about how these identities work. Like, when you're used to thinking of the gender binary, just like male and female, people often think of it as this choice of, like, you're either male or you're female. And one of those choices is defined as, like, the opposite or the absence of the other. So, like, the assumption is that if you're not male, then you must be female, and if you're not female, then you must be male. That's not how non-binary gender identities work. Non-binary gender identities are like these descriptors. It's not like a category where you choose one, and then that's the only one that applies to you. It's like, it's not like picking a choice on a multiple choice form. Rather, it's like there are all these different words out there, and uh, you can think of them as like adjectives that you use to describe your gender identity. The same way you might use adjectives to describe a person, or to describe your car, or to describe a fruit. Like, if you go to the store and you pick up an apple, you might be like, okay, this is an apple, and it's red, and it's round. Maybe there's another apple that's not as round, and so you might say it has like a different shape. Or like, you might look at pears. One of them might be round, one of them might be pear-shaped. So you have these different descriptors, uh, and they're kind of overlapping. Like, both a pear and an apple would be a fruit. Gender identity is a lot like this. There are these broader umbrella terms, and then there are these more specific terms. And like, for a given person, they might have eight or ten or more terms that accurately or truthfully describe their gender identity. And this can get a little bit confusing. So I want to start with some of the basic terms. Uh, the most basic term that I've found is non-binary. And that means that your gender is not strictly male or female. You don't identify fully as male or female. And it's a really broad category. Another really broad category is genderqueer. That has like a little bit more specificity in it, though. Uh, I, I consider it to be an equally broad category, but there's a sort of other element of it in there, which is the reclaiming of the Q slur, the word queer. Um, queer is this word that has this history as a, a like derogatory term used for gay and lesbian and bisexual people initially, and also transgender people, people who deviate from social norms about gender and sexuality. And wrapped up in the, the slur queer is this idea of being deviant or weird, being a bad thing, like there's something bad about it, and it's used as an insult to put people down. And so I find this term gender queer really powerful, because using it consciously, it's reclaiming that slur, and it's saying, yes, I am deviant, I am deviating from these norms that are imposed on me by society, and I'm embracing that. I see it as a good thing, I see it as a positive part of my identity. And I find that really powerful. Uh, because it's a slur, though, I think it's important to not use it on other people. I would never want to describe someone else as genderqueer unless I knew for sure that that person openly identified as such, because it is a slur. 
there are a lot of reasons people might not want to use that. Uh, I think the term genderqueer sometimes connotes a sort of like edgy aesthetic or even like a political stance. And some people might want to evoke that, but, but people might not necessarily want that. Even though I privately identify as genderqueer, uh, I don't necessarily advertise that in all settings. So that's the difference between those two terms, like genderqueer and non-binary, that I see as umbrella terms. So what are some other terms out there? I want to stick with the terms that I feel are like kind of close to my identity. We've all heard of male and female. There's this other term that I think is really important, which is agender. It's like the, the word a is one word, a and gender. Agender means that you don't identify with a gender at all. And this is an identity that I actually have a pretty strong affinity for. I don't feel like I'm fully agender, but I feel like a deep resonance with people who describe themselves as agender. Like, people who describe themselves as agender have often described it to me as not having any internal sense of their gender identity, or not being at all attached to the idea of gender. And especially when I was younger, this really resonates with me. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I saw this gender differentiation in society, I saw the roles placed on people, and it just struck me as stupid and unnecessary. And I didn't feel like I wanted to be a part of it. Like, I wanted to be able to dress and act the way I wanted to, and I wanted other people to be able to do that too. And I didn't want people to be using different pronouns to refer to uh, boys and girls, or men and women. Like, I remember experiencing some discomfort with that as a kid. I'd never heard of the idea of gender-neutral pronouns, but I still had this sense of, like, not liking the way the language differentiated from people. Um, so, so, like, it's, it's kind of like a matter of personal taste, what you identify as. So, like, I, I'm not going to claim that that's exactly, that experience is exactly what it means to be a gender, but uh, just throwing that out there, that that's, that's this other term, that it generally means like a lack of gender identity, or like a lack of attachment to the idea of gender, or a lack of internal sense of gender. Another term that you may see a lot is the term gender fluid. Um, gender fluid means having a gender identity, or an internal sense or feeling of gender, that changes. Uh, and it may change from day to day, from moment to moment even, or it may change slowly over longer time scales. And it may change from male to female, female to male, or it may change between other categories. Like, a person could be gender fluid between male and agender, or between gender, uh, agender, male, and female, or other identities. Uh, these identities can combine in any number of ways. Um, so gender fluid is pretty broad, and it's also an umbrella term in the sense that if your gender identity changes at all, then I think it's accurate to use that label to refer to yourself. You may not want to use that label, though, because uh, especially people who don't understand the term gender fluid, they may think of it as like, oh, this means that one day you're a man and one day you're a woman, and that might not be exactly what you want to connote or communicate to people. So, um, I personally feel that I am also gender fluid, but I'm a little bit less likely to use that term to refer to myself, because I feel like the degree to which my gender identity fluctuates, and also my gender expression, like the way I dress, the degree to which that fluctuates is relatively small. Uh, another term that is much less commonly used, uh, and more specific, is gender flux. Gender flux means that the intensity of your gender identity changes. So an example could be someone might feel like, okay, I'm male, and then another day they might feel like less strongly male, they might feel like sort of male, and maybe another day they might feel agender, or just feel no sense of gender identity. So that would be an example of what gender flux might look like. Uh, I don't hear people use that term as much. There are two more terms I want to talk about, and they are uh, demigender. So I hear people describe themselves as like a demi-guy or a demi-girl. Uh, the idea is that if you have like a demigender, it's like you identify partly as male, but partly as something else, uh, or partly as female and partly as something else. 
and those can can relate to all these other identities out there. Like a person can be mostly male, but maybe they feel a little bit female, or they could be like somewhat male, but like mostly agender, or they could feel somewhat male, but maybe they're gender fluid or gender flux in some some way. But the demi identities generally emphasize one uh, of those binary identities, male or female, uh, and then they're connoting that it's not like the full picture of your gender identity. There are a whole bunch of other terms out there, but these are the ones that I've found resonate most with me. Um, in terms of like sorting this out, if you are questioning your gender identity, I would uh, recommend you to research these terms, but I don't think you necessarily need to find any one that fits you. I personally think that most of the time, because this stuff is pretty esoteric in the mainstream society, most of the time I just say, I'm non-binary. Um, like, it's the broadest term that I've found in use, and most of the time people don't even understand what that means, uh, but I found that it's a little bit more of a neutral term, like it has the least kind of like assumptions that people tend to bring to it, so especially if I'm talking with people who don't seem familiar with these issues, that's the term I'm most likely to use. Uh, if I'm talking with people who are themselves non-binary or who identify with these other terms, I'm going to be much more likely to uh, describe myself in more detail and say, well, yeah, I identify as gender queer, gender fluid, gender fluid between agender, male, female, and so on, and like maybe talk about it in a little more depth. Uh, most of the time, though, I don't do that. I hope that this also can give you some clarity, like if you are a cisgender person, and this is all completely alien to you, uh, that it, it can give you a sense of like what these things mean. Like if, if someone is using all these different terms, uh, they are overlapping. It's, it's not like there's one correct thing to apply to their gender, it's more like they're descriptors that are trying to get at different aspects of this thing that is pretty hard to describe. So I hope you find this useful. Uh, please let me know if you have anything to add, or if there's anything that doesn't resonate with you, if you're like, hey, I have one of these identities myself, and I'm not sure you described it accurately, or maybe I have a different way of thinking about it, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, and thank you.